winning headlines, your media police post. Brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government, coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 8th of October 2019 and I am 2J. I am 2M. And I am GK. And in case you missed the headlines, here they are. Yes. In the Daily Nation, mm -hmm. confession, how they were killed in cold blood. Mm -hmm. Yes. The standard, inside police killer squad. Mm. In the star, three chilling hours before Kimani murder. We've missed a good uh, murder headline, haven't we? Yes. Absolutely. But yeah. here you have them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But before we go there, yeah. yes. there is a WhatsApp message going around. Yes, a false release from the Office of Interior. Is yes. that not right? Yes. About yes. the nature of, or the probability of us having a public holiday. holiday on the 10th. Yes. yes. And so it's been going around. We yeah. want to call it out as fake news only because we want to urge all yes. our viewers yes. to actually look at the end of yeah. that pronouncement. Yeah. Yes. Dated 2018. 2018. Kenyans just love holidays. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but yeah, we need However, <laughs> if, if it applied last year, yes. we can only speculate that it will apply again this year. Yes. So here at the Fifth Estate, we want to grant Kenyans a, pub, a public holiday yeah. on the 10th of October. Go yeah. forth and have fun. Yeah. So. In the star, we yes. have so we actually let's do all the headlines together. together. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what is the context of this murder story? I know mm. we had heard about it yeah. a few months back. Um, so, what happened was in June 2016, yeah. um, uh, Willie Kimani and two other people, uh, Willie Kimani is a lawyer, they were murdered mm. and they were found murdered. And yes. their bodies were found in, a, in somewhere called Ordonio Sabuk yes. near the river. Yeah. And uh, the case goes this way one cop. Uh, decides to shoot at a guy called Mwendo. Mwendo is a border border rider. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mwendo not so happy, he decides to take the case to court. Yeah. And also decides to report the cop at Aipoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The policing. A, uh, oversight authority. Yes. Now, um, fast forward, Aipoa decides to take this, uh, uh, to sponsor this guy. And I think, uh, no, this is according to the dailies. Mm -hmm. Says to uh, get a lawyer called Willie Kimani mm -hmm. to stand for this uh, poor border border guy. Mm -hmm. yes. So a form of legal aid. It's a form yeah. of legal yeah. aid. Yeah. Yes. Now, on the day of the mention of the court case, mm -hmm. the cop is not happy that Aipoa could actually have a strong case against him. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys just come out of court and on their way, I think, to the city center, they get blocked by cops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cops take them, take them to an uh, uh, a uh, administration police post. Mm. Right there, the cops, I think, were feeling hungry. They went, they decided to have some lunch. Mm. And some While dinner. these guys are in when cell. These guys are in cell. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of hours later, someone walks into the bar, a bar and restaurant, and says that one of the guys has been contacted by his wife. Mm. And therefore, people know his whereabouts. Yes. Yeah, and at that point, they panicked because the phones yes. were apparently all in the car, mm. switched off. Absolutely. Yeah. So the idea was that they shouldn't communicate. Yes. Now, the damn cops go back and get these uh, guys from... However, at the restaurant, this is where the context of the three chilling hours comes in. Because for three hours, yeah. they decided what they were going to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, 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 the three chilling hours is mm -hmm. when they were, they were actually in the boot of the car. Yeah. But I'll get there. Mm -hmm. Now, they go to the police station, get these guys, and drive all the way to Odonio Sabuk. Mm -hmm. There they'd have a debate on whether to kill these three people. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, this guy, the witness who's been singing like a bird, yes. uh, decides to, and, and another cop called Mwangi, they decide to say that that these guys should not be killed because they have already exposed themselves. Yeah, Matter they've of fact, booked, they have already been booked up from this post. Yeah. Of, of course, their phone signals are on and all that. They would be found. Mm. But one cop says, "Uh, uh we have to kill these guys." So and the cop who said that is apparently is, is, it is the main suspect. Okay. Now the main suspect, apparently, according to the dailies, not our words, uh, gets one of the guys from the boot, uh, strangles him, puts him in a sack. And throws him in the river. Mm. They move a little bit ahead. They do the exact same thing to Willie Kimani and mm. the rest, and they strangle them, put them in sacks, and throw them into the river. Yeah, right. That is a context of what this man has been seeing. Exactly. Before. And so the update right now is that this person, Peter Ngugi, mm. is the police informant. He's yes. the one who has been singing yes. like a bird to the cops and has given yes. all the details that are now in these dailies. Absolutely. Yes. And it begs the question, yeah. why would you have him in the crew if exactly. you were going yes. to commit such a crime? Uh -huh. right? so why I, would you have a former informer? I yes. think that maybe we can analyze this story in the context of game theory. Yes. yes. And in game theory, there's this well-known scenario called the prisoner's dilemma. Yes. yes. And this dilemma is set up in such a way yeah. that both both parties choose can choose to protect themselves yeah. at the expense of the other participant. Yes. Mm. So uh, 2M, if yeah. you and I were in jail, yeah. we can either choose to both 
confess to the crimes. Yes. yes. However, in this scenario, if we both confess, yeah. we both go to jail. Yes. To jail. We can also choose to both deny. Yes. yes. And if we both deny, we yes. get a lesser sentence. And that's yes. the best case scenario. That is a best case so scenario. So even for these yeah. guys, best case scenario is if yeah. nobody talks. Six, exactly. Six, no, however, yeah. the alternative, the yeah. third option, is yes. that if you confess yes. and I deny, yeah. you go scot free, and that's essentially what has happened with Gugier right now. Absolutely. He, because he's a police informer, because he's given information to the police, yeah. he will get a lesser sentence or no sentence at all Absolutely. compared yes. to the other four who yes. now will spend a longer time in prison. Uh, yes. yes. So, so, we, so we can say he's probably entered into a plea bargain. Mm -hmm. And uh, right here I see him in cuffs, meaning he's a suspect. Yes. And, uh, oh, and, and maybe after he finishes with his testimony, he probably will become a state witness. Yeah. So what the prisoner's dilemma teaches us really yeah. is that completely rational people yeah. can make irrational decisions. Yes. yes. Right? So Guge, he could have kept quiet. Yes. yes. However, these other four um, May have people, yeah. they should have, they should have, yeah, they should have sung as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, I think they should have never allowed a police informer yeah. to be in their in their <laughs> so. Anyway, we can analyze the headline. We yeah. have a three-part criteria that we use to break them down. Yeah. We ask ourselves whether it is topical or speculative, yes. whether it is repetitive or groundbreaking, and whether it is thoughtful or just plain lazy. Yes. Um, topical. Yes, yes right? definitely. Because yeah. the the case is now ongoing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think of the two, I would get rid of the star because mm. three chilling hours, unless you've read the story, you yes. have no idea you wouldn't pick what this. might be going on. Yeah. So we can toss that for now. Yeah. Certainly. Then we have the two. Mm. Yes. I think exactly. that, yeah, the standard one, I think I would pick that up instantly. Absolutely. Yeah, Drawn to it. Short to the point. Yes. Absolutely. You have police, you have killers, and you have squad. squad. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but also, I would also be a little bit sensitive the family of Willie Kimani. Mm. I don't think anybody would want to be reminded about him placing the, I mean, them placing this picture here. Yeah, but Although, however, I think these are good updates that have been made in the story. Yeah. So I think that's the most important Can thing. Can we so give we a standard? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we toss the. Fantastic. So we have a winning headline from the, the, the standard. Yes. Yeah. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, right. where we have a three-part criteria that we use. Yeah. We ask ourselves whether it is humorous or dry, mm. whether it is sarcastic or pessimistic, and whether it is effective or just plain lazy. Yes. And here we have caricature of Rela Odinga. I'm struggling already. Yes. And uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he's holding up uh, a banner. And the banner uh, reads, or does. And the E in the banner in the banner is a AU special envoy. Envoy. Mm -hmm. but Kenyans like saying envoy. Yes. And the caption there is why Raila thinks he's entitled to give orders. And the the backdrop of that is also the handshake. The handshake. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is such a terrible cartoon. No, I sort of liked it. Oh my good the but, word the wordplay is just too much for me. As in he just he was really stretching. Yes. The ways in which he could explain the story. I I'm sorry. I actually awful. think it's his signature style. Yeah. It's that you guys are missing the point. No, 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 no. Oh, so no, now no, we're no, co-signing. We're no, co -signing. No, not, not you guys. Two J. Yes. Is missing the point completely. Yes. Mm -hmm. I get your style. Yes. I see where you're going. But but there's uh, title like because yeah. he's an AU a special envoy. Uh, envoy. Yes. There's, I mean, I love it. Why but, are you making it sound nice? <laughs> <laughs> but guys. Guys. And then he's holding it like he's like a referee. Yeah. I mean, me, I'm ready. Like a, like a cheerleader. <laughs> I really like, like it. It's like pom poms. Eh? <laughs> okay, guys. But put I, in the no, pocket. No, 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 no. Actually, guys, what Ozone is telling us mm. is this. Yes. Raila Odinga is probably the second in command in Kenya. Wow. You're not. Now you're stretching. Yes. <laughs> no, that's what he's telling us. He has an official position as an AU uh, representative. That goes higher than the deputy president. Mm. I mean, guys, haven't you seen cabinet secretaries going to brief Raila? At he's not even a government I, we, official. We live in strange times right now, don't we? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll put Reality the is stranger than fiction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Dula. Dula. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still about the orders. Yes. But, but now, uh, my, one man is delusioned. Uh, Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. caricature of him. Uh, he's driving, or rather he thinks he's driving uh, the, the, the limo. Presidential limo. Presidential limo. Who does the driver sit? He's mm -hmm. looking back. And the railway is atop the limousine, mm -hmm. and the steering wheel is long, mm -hmm. and they're stepping on the pedals. And in the back seat, one by uh, William Bruto, as has always, just jumped. crying. Yes, he's just no, I don't think, yeah, he, either he's jumping in, so he's not left. He does exactly what he has done <laughs> because you can see the car is in motion. <laughs> Don't and, leave him. And see that his leg is still outside, but he's managed to be in the car. Uh -huh. And and the caption there is, I ordered the Likoni dodging to be stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and they're passing by the Likoni, mm. you, you know? <laughs> I, I, so this, this, this made me laugh. Yeah, I think this to me 
he's a more convincing story. Whereas in the story, you're trying to suggest that Raila is the one in charge. Yes. Here, Ndula is telling us that Uhuru is allowing him to think he's in charge. That is yeah. very, well, I like that. Well, I like okay. that. I like that. And but also, why time, are they all driving and looking backwards? Or which style is uh, it? No, no. <laughs> it, it shows, it, it probably shows Uhuru is actually looking at Ruto. Like, no, do you Uhuru get the message? is the Makanga. <laughs> uh, no, but this man cannot be driving a top car. All right. With, yeah. the, then, with that said, then, so can, money, we, can we no, trust, no, no, can we no, trust no. he has, no, no, he has is... all the tools for driving? He you... has the pedals, yeah. he has the steering wheel, yeah. he has the, whatever that is, the yeah. signal. The thing. handshake has made yeah. him strong. Guys, have you ever seen those cars for driving school? Mm-hmm. They have a pedal over there. So you're assuming the Uhuru has seat. the real... And you can always deactivate them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, now, what Raila has been given is a pedal the for decoy, driving The school. dummy one. Yes, mm-hmm. and now he's even wearing an orange shirt. I like that. I okay. actually think you're reading too much into can that. Can I please <laughs> toss, can I toss the star? Yes. With yes, that said, absolutely. thank you. Yes. All right, finally, we have the standard. Yes. <laughs> Although you tossed before we saw... Oh, oh, has given us. Such a bad cartoon. Mm-hmm. Oh no. <laughs> describe it. It's very bad. Uh, let me and the uh, Kenyan athletes don't look like this. She makes he makes Why don't you describe the cartoon first? Okay, okay, I'll describe it. Uh, Kaso. Kaso has given us uh, an athlete. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's running I think in Doha. And uh, <laughs> the caption there is Mayday, Mayday. They already have a head start. Now, what are you trying to say? That other countries... So the athlete is running towards the 2020 Olympics. Olympics. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I think he's trying to say that we did so well that we are ahead of all the other countries who yeah. are trying to catch up with us. Yeah, but and it says at the bottom, we came, we saw, we conquered. Is this telling us lacks, something that we don't know? I think it's a positive cartoon. It's a positive cartoon, I mean, but I think it lacks imagination. I think it's a bit simple. And I always say, if it gets to the point where even I can draw it, it's not very interesting Kaso, at all. So you will win one day. I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. We have our winning cartoon from Jula of the Baby Hill. Absolutely. So guys, yes. what is our final thought? And now, our final thought. Inspired by the rule of one crazy man, former president of Nigeria, mm. Sunny Abacha. Yes. Gonna give a summary. Yeah. Mm. So this week, as we said, in the run up to Moy Day, we want to look at some of the African presidents who existed at the time, the same time that Moy did. Yes. So yesterday we looked at um, who did we look at yesterday? We, oh dear, I forgot <laughs> to make that. However, yeah. today we're gonna look at Sani Abacha. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So he was born in September 1943, and we he looked at Obote. Milton Obote. Obote, of course. How could he forget? <laughs> you know, you threw me off. I was <laughs> like, how did she forget? <laughs> anyway. You know, I was going to say. Mussolini. <laughs> oh, he's not. Okay, so Abacha was born in September 1943 and yeah. passed away in June 1998. Yeah. He was a military leader and dictator who served as a president of Nigeria for only five years, from 1993 till his death in 98. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Little is known about his life. However, what we do know a lot about him is that he was a military man through and through. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he received his formal military training both in Nigeria and um, British military colleges. Yes. And he rose through the ranks. Yes. Such that by 1983 he received the rank of brigadier which i believe is one star yes yeah. but what they actually say about him is that he's the first nigerian soldier mm. to attain the rank of full star which mm. is i think five, five stars, stars. Yeah. Yes. without skipping ranks yes. Yes. so, so time, I, mean, I don't want to yeah. talk badly about our nigerian brothers yes. but we know they like to cut <laughs> corners <laughs> so what we're saying about abacha is that he took his time to get to the um, position of full yeah. star ranking yeah. he yeah. earned his strike he earned his strike yeah. yes so the military of Abacha is marked by his involvement in several successful military coups. Mm. Absolutely. So I think just a bit of context, context for that. Yeah. Um, Nigeria received their independence in 1960. Uh-huh. But thereafter, for about 13 years, they yeah. operated under military rule. Yes. Um, but that changed in 1979 when the country turned into a democratic rule. And that was led by the president, Sheshu Shagari, who was elected president. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then... <laughs> but then in 1983, yeah. with the help of Abacha, yeah. the military overthrew Shagari yeah. and Major General Mohammed Buhari, who yes. we know today, yes. mm-hmm. becomes the head of state. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah. 1985, yes. again, with yeah. the help of Abacha, yeah. they overthrew Buhari, yes. but it was a peaceful <laughs> coup this time. Yeah. So just like yesterday, the yeah. man who put you in yeah. Yeah, the same yeah. man who took you out. out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Buhari is peacefully removed from the position of president yeah. and he's replaced with military general, sorry, major general yes. Ibrahim Bagade. Babanginda. That one. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So then in 93, Babanginda yeah. steps down yeah. and he places Ernest, yeah. these Nigerian names are hard, yeah. Ernest Shokitan yeah. in the interim government.
government. Yes. Um, but then eventually, Abachi seizes power from him, and then he becomes president. Yes. So that's, I think, three in total military coups that he took yes. part in, yeah. eventually to get him to the position of president. Yes. So although Abacha promised to return um, Nigeria to democracy, yeah. he has a bit of a mixed legacy. Mm. Yes. So his administration um, saw the success of ECOMOG, yes. which is the um, Economic Community of West African States Monitoring Group yes. um, in West Africa. And yeah. it also saw um, the rise of Nigeria's military presence. Yeah. So they helped in um, assisting Sierra Leone and Liberia in their democratic um, yes. processes. Yes. 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 Yeah. However, at the same time back home, he was doing the opposite. Yes. Mm. So he banned political activity. Yeah. He found a large portion of the military, yes. he controlled the press, and he assembled a personal security force for himself yeah. of about 3,000 men. Yeah. Wow. So about um, five years later, yeah. in his power rule, yeah. we see him suffering a heart attack. Yes. Mm. Yes. I know there's a lot of questions about how that heart, heart attack, attack came happened. about, yeah. but I'm just going to say he suffered yeah. from a heart a attack. Heart attack. Before, yeah. before you go, GK, yes. I want to say a story. There's a man called Karyuki Chotara. Mm -hmm. Karyuki Chotara, uh, one time, I think, Baba Nkida. He came to visit Kenyatta. Yeah. And uh, Karaki Chotara was told, take this man to the airport. It is said, this is a story. I don't know how true it is. And then in, in, on the car, just uh, they were seated together. Karaki Chotara says, Ah, now Kenda Nyubani. Usalimia Mama Gida. Usalimia Kina Gida. Na usalimia Gida Wote. Done. <laughs> focus on just so um he he's in power for just five years yes, yes. and they say that sani abacha plundered about four billion dollars in his short time yeah. in, as president. Yeah. He basically took about 2-3% to 3 of Nigeria's GDP every, every year. Wow. wow. Right? Yeah. And just recently, yeah. they discovered $267 million mm. um, from accounts in Jersey, which yeah. is a tax haven, yeah. um, some islands off the UK. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they also recovered about $300 million, yeah. uh, 300 to $700 million yeah. in Swiss accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Now this money, yeah. after a long tussle with the d different authorities, yeah. is going Going to be repatriated back to Nigeria. 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 Yes. And Buhari mm. very clever very Cleverly. Buhari very cleverly <laughs> mm. yeah. um, is putting it through a social program. Yeah. What they call the National Safety Net Program. Mm. Yes. Which helps poor families. Yes. So basically with the three hundred uh, with the three hundred million yes. from the Swiss accounts, yeah. they will pay three hundred thousand Nigerian people mm -hmm. fourteen dollars yes. a month for shillings. the next six years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Now it seems petty, maybe there was It does, use. because it only amounts to about a thousand dollars over that but six listen, year period. And this is the problem. Mm. Nigeria is one of those countries that suffers from the resource curse. Mm. Yeah, so very oil right. it should be oil rich. It yeah. means other things should translate to this wealth, but yeah. it really it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was also something that oh, yes. um, uh, yeah. Abacha oversaw. Oh, yes, so he siphoned a lot of the money, yeah. uh, out of ruined the, the fuel yeah. system yes. and then Yes. It's only now that they're getting refineries. Then. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But th then again, the thing that it got me thinking was that the fight against financial crimes yeah. has a lot to do with being enabled by these tax havens. Yes. Mm, so we had a headline true. last week yeah. um, about tax havens and yes. how some companies are registering in Mauritius and Kenya. Oh, oh, yes. And we sort of were pro yeah. it. But yes. then now I'm seeing that there can be a dark side yes, oh, yeah, that's of, that's of, of yeah. these tax havens, yes. right? Yeah. And it also reminded me of the Panama Papers. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, this was the biggest leak of. I think in history, history yes, right? Yes, um, after what was the other guy? WikiLeaks. Yeah, yes, Wikileaks. after WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, and it took forty years of data. Yes, but. Oh, interestingly enough, Abacha didn't show up in any of this. Actually, only one Nigerian yeah. really showed up in the Panama As leaks. we said, they know how to cut They really corners, know how yeah. to do it, yeah. And in Kenya, I think the Panama <laughs> leaks yeah. only exposed Justice Kaplan Rawal. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that was, and she denied that as well. And yeah. it, no, nothing ever came yes. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, but I think every African country around that time has a story about corruption. Yes. Mm. We had Goldenberg. Yes. yes. They have this. Yes. So there's always. Yes. Something else. That's so Absolutely. True. There was a man called um, uh, this Sunny Sunny Abacha. Yeah. He jailed a man called Cap uh, I tell you, say Cap <laughs> Lawa. A man called Ken, Ken Sarubiwa, Sarubiwa yeah. mm -hmm. a famous poet and uh, you know an artist, and he used to, used to write a lot. Yeah. Now Ken Sarubiwa was a president of a group called Mosop, the movement of the survival of the Ogoni people. Mm -hmm. Now Shell, multinational, all multinational, had set up a, where the Ogonis were, yes. and they polluted that place with oil. Yeah, yeah. But it's most, devastated. but yeah, but even more so, they 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 did not give them any dime for the oil they collected from there. Mm -hmm. Now, Ken Saruwiwa was a critic of the the, the, the Abacha regime, regime. Mm -hmm. and Abacha locked him up. 
Mm. And they set up a kangaroo court and they prosecuted him. Mm. And, and, and eight others. Yeah. Him, and eight others yeah. him, him and eight others. And they sentenced him to death. Yeah. Now, one Daniel Arab Moy, in, uh, in I think 1995, mm. flies from Nairobi to Lagos, goes to State House to see Sunny Abacha. And he says, I plead that you give this man clemency. Mm. And Abacha says, all right, I've had you. Um, you will this this man will be released, mm. or I, I will forgive his 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 deeds. Now, no sooner that no, no, no sooner than Moi had left mm. the Nigerian airspace, mm. this guy was taken out. Yes, he was hung. Uh, why do you think Moi failed can, in this? Moi failed because of this. I think he was not seen as equal as an equal. Okay, because he hadn't Sanya done the military Abacha. thing. He had not done the military thing, but also as well, Moi had political prisoners back home. Let's also forget. Let's also not forget mm -hmm. that uh, during the ninety that was nineteen ninety five, mm. Moi had been sanctioned by the West. Mm. He had political prisoners, and it was during the era of the Organization. Yeah. Now, I think Moy was also being very selfish here because I don't think he cared much for the fate of Ken Saruiwa. Matter of fact, I think he wanted to clean up his image in the West mm. and so that sanctions could be lifted on Kenya. Yeah, wow. it's possible. So Imagine. much so that he did help get Nigeria removed from the Commonwealth group. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. As a result and, that, of, and that's the following year. Yeah. But then again, you ask, who then would have a... Uh, convinced Sunny Abacha to release Ken Saruya. Mm -hmm. In my view, and, and we're talking about this earlier, mm -hmm. uh, it probably was Idi Amin. And, and the reason is... Oh, a fellow military... Yes, a, a, a fellow general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you see five stars, you recognize five stars. Yeah. But more in his nice suits and Italian shoes. And his humble background. Humble background. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Well, on a day where we had a winning headline, from the standard yeah. and the winning country from the daily nation. Yeah. I want to leave you with this. Mm -hmm. Ken Saruwiwa died fighting for the Ogoni people. Yeah. And when Shell Company left yes. uh, Ogoni, yeah. Abacha felt slighted. He oh, thought, yes. you lost me all this money. Uh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. But we were taught us that courage is nothing, nothing less yeah. than the power to overcome danger and fear yeah. while continuing to affirm what is right. Yeah. Because mm. evil prospers when good men do nothing. Oh, yes. Man. So please subscribe to our channel. And yeah. find us on Star Times. Star Times. <laughs> Go TV. Bye, Peter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Star Times and Go TV. Have a good evening. Bless.